NBA 2K18 tutorial number 72. Today we bring it back. We bring it all the way back. We go old school to the triangle family. Yes, this is going to be a triangle heavy playset today for you to use and dominate against your friends online and offline. This is an elite playset for handlers to use in the pinch post area. This set itself, it's got 3 deadly options and it uses all of the gameplay controls that are available to you that not a lot of players know about all over 2k18. And that is a nasty nasty reverse gem by the king. So make sure you add this to your arsenal which should be at least over 20 playsets by now if you watch all of my videos. So add this to the rest of it. And once again, this will be in the Boston and Pelicans playbook. And for those of you who don't have these playbooks on my team, just make sure you check out the pin comment for uh, my my team playbook document. You can search all of the plays on there and which playbooks they're available on. So just check that comment if you don't own these playbooks and try to find the play elsewhere. For playing now online players, all you're gonna do is go to coaching sliders and change the playbook to Celtics, and you're good to go. And make sure you have the same controller settings you see here, especially change receiver control to hand off and pitch pass, uh, icon passing to full receiver control, and make sure you disable skip pass. You need these same exact controller settings. And obviously you will need a player that has pick and roll ball handler plays, so any point guard will do, or make sure you go to 2K MT Central to check it out. So, the play itself is called Fist 4-1 Elbow Rip. It's a free option triangle set, and this set utilizes wing pick and rolls, handoffs, and off ball cuts. So we're gonna focus on option number one, the STS screener, screener wing pick and roll option. This is a basic option, but it has deadly results because of the spacing that is available to it. So I'm bringing up the ball with Rubio. I've called a play for Rubio, okay? So the, whatever you call a play for, it's gonna end up at the elbow, at the pinch post, and it's just gonna trigger the screen that comes from the wing, screener, screener action, and that's a beautiful reverse going baseline this year. Because as I've taught you guys this year, if you're going baseline, make sure you go reverse layup. And you can see here, I have called a play for Wade. We're gonna enter the bottom way, and you can see Osman go set the screen for Tristan. Tristan is gonna come set this screen at the wing pick and roll. So this is the screen and screener action leading to a wing pick and roll with the handler going baseline, which is OP this year. So the extra screen, the screener action out of this triangle pinch post set for your handler. Going, but you see that? Coderone screens Kevin Love, Kevin Love comes screens LeBron James, that just throws up the defense majorly, opens up Coderone in the corner free. That's an ideal shot, he misses it, but that's okay, that's a good look. So we run the same set again, and you can see me feed it to LeBron James. I caught it for LeBron, the ball goes to Coderone, he screens the greener, the screener comes screens for LeBron, and LeBron goes baseline, screener rolls in, I can take my time, go back to the screener, hit the Roman, still easy finish. But that's option number one, the basic option. Now let's focus on option number two the elbow post flush cut. This is an advanced option, there's more details. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna abuse the post animation as an off ball screen to free up the cut it. So you can see here, I have called the play for LeBron. So Coderone is gonna come get the ball. Whoever you call it for is gonna end up at the pinch post. I call for LeBron, LeBron ends up at the pinch post. And I'm in the post up animation, flush in Kevin Love. Beautiful cut right there, that's a huge twist from the original screen and screen and wing pick and roll. This is kind of like a post up slip, but check out the details right here because these are really important. You want to hold L2 and get into post up animation right when the cutter is going. And this is basically a double screen because the handler here is using himself as a screener in the post up animation to free up the repco. And you need to bring the handler above the original screen position. You see where the repco is and you can see there's a screen branch above the blue circle, you need to bring the handler above that so Jerebko is under it and because he's under the screen position, all you're gonna do is hold triangle to trigger the cut and let go the pass and the entire time you're holding on the L2 with your handler to act as a kind of, kind of like a makeshift off ball screen even though you have the ball. So while holding triangle leading the cutter in, that's deadly. Here you can see it one more time, I'm bringing it with Burks, I've called the play for Hood, so I'm gonna get the ball to Hood. Burke's gonna set his off ball screen. I'm gonna get into the post up animation, not too early. I'm gonna get it right here as the cutter is moving. So it triggers the post up animation when the cutter moves. You see how I have sealed his defender and I make sure I'm above the original screen position. So Jerelko is now under the screen. So I'm above the screen position so that I'm gonna hold the flush. Flush the cutter in because I was higher than him. Make sure you stay higher than the cutter. The cutter needs to be the lower one. Then you can flush him in for this easy, easy layup or dunk, depending on what kind of animations the cutter has. 
if you are in a hurry though, you don't need to trigger the post animation to do this. As you can see, I feed it in the way. I took a dribble too far, so it's too late for me to get in the post position. But I'm still gonna get above the screen, above the cutter, make sure the cutter is below the handler, then flush him in. That's the key. So you don't always have to hold on to the post up animation. You can see me do it here again without the without the post up animation. I've called a play for LeBron. I get it to LeBron. And then I'm gonna get to the elbow, get around love. I didn't get under him this time, so it's not ideal, but it still kind of works, but that's not perfect execution. So obviously there's many different ways to get the same result. Like you can just get it to the post and flush the cutter in. Like here, you can see me again, this is not ideal. I'm not really posted up. I'm just backing up really. And then I flush in Kevin Love. So that's very different from the previous ones you saw, but you still work. But the thing is the handle a post up screen where you're using the guy in the pinch post and you're giving him to seal is much better. You see, I'm not doing any kind of post up screen here and it's just so congested in the plane. So if you don't execute this well, like I said, the pain is gonna be like really congested. And with there's congestion, it won't work. So you see here, I post that up too early. So I'm not really above favors. And favors is already here. So see, I kind of ran into favors, so I screwed myself there. I made the shot, but that's very poor execution. But this also goes to show how deadly this cut is, because even when I mess up, it's still good. But you don't want to mess up, right? Because you want to nail it. You can see me mess up here again. I call the play for Rubio, let him out too far. And now see, I'm underneath the screener or the cutter. So I stopped the post-up animation too early. The screener is too high. You don't want to be underneath the screener and cutter guy. Like I'm underneath the cutter here. That's terrible. I flush him in. Like he makes it, but that's even worse execution than the previous one. And this time my poor execution got me hurt. Like you see me here. I didn't even post up. I just flushed the guy. That's a bad read, bad pass. Like that is not going in. So with this option, option two with the uh, post screen flush cut, great execution equals great results. You can see me do it perfectly with a little problem here. I seal, I got above the cutter, who was originally gonna send me a screen, then I flush, that is perfect. You can see it here again. I'm calling the play for LeBron while handling with Crowder. I get the ball to LeBron in the pinch post. He's gonna dribble up higher than Kevin Love, used the back to seal with the L2. That's the key right there. You gotta see it with the L2, but you can't do it too early. But when you do do it, you get it, you must get above the cutter. All right, so watch. L2 screen, get above the cutter, flash in the cutter, that's success. If you don't get it above the cutter, it won't work. So here's option number three, dribble handoff drive. Here, we're gonna use the handoff animation with skill to create driving lanes for our big man. So that's why I told you guys to switch the uh, receiver controller icon so you can hold circle. So you can see it one time in real time. With the correct controller settings, circle will become handoffs and you can just be pinching off the camera love there. And that's perfect action. That's beautiful, nice and fast. So make sure you do have your handoff fundamentals very sound when you're doing this because here you can see me kind of hand it off too late so you're gonna avoid holding circle for too long before passing it you see the animation that favors is in now after he catches the handoff that just means you held circle for too long like you should have let go earlier so i held it on for too long there and if you do that nope not gonna work that's ugly so late handoffs sometimes though will still work but it's best to avoid see i did a late hand late handoff again because you can see favors get into the bad animation but because the set and the motion is so good it still works but because it is so good you might as well follow with great execution because once again that will lead to great results watch the handoff here i let go early you see when i let go early favors is in full momentum so he's able to get in there quickly and he'll duck in super fast and he'll finish it up so watch me call the flavor rubio get him in the pinch post hand it off on time you see how he comes out with a speed burst if you hand it off while not moving make sure you're not moving when you do the hand off and you get a hand off at the right time not too early not too late he will come out with a speed boost and obviously don't forget because if you do this handoff correctly you're gonna get like in the really deep post position so if you're that deep screw it just post him up finish it it's kevin love own him in the paint so with all of these options available to you I still suggest in the end, you want to play basketball, don't expect anything. Just attack with pace and read and react. You see, the handoff didn't work here, so I go back with LeBron, but I'm attacking in pace. You see, no momentum wasted. I went from one part of the play to just freelance action. I'm just going with the flow of the game, but I'm attacking with pace. I'm attacking with velocity. I'm not slowing down. I get it into the pinch post. There's nothing here. I hand it off to LeBron. Uh, Kevin Love, still nothing. Get it back to LeBron. You see, I'm keeping that momentum going and flowing. I am not stopping. 
when you're doing this, when you're running the set, you're not going to stop at all because you're going to trigger a lot of momentum from that elbow action, be it if you run a wing pick and roll, you run a hand up or a flush cut. You're going to trigger a lot of momentum. And when you do, when you have momentum on the court, you see, I'm, I'm not stopping. You see that kinetic energy? If you can feel it, kind of, like I kept the ball moving and whizzing around. Players necessarily don't have to move all the time, but the ball's going to be moving all the damn time. That's what I'm teaching you here. If the initial action from the free options I show you didn't work, do not stop. Keep, keep that energy going because when you're doing this, something is going to break. Now, maybe it doesn't break completely so you don't get an easy shot right away, but eventually you will find something. If you keep that energy going, you will find enough of a break. You will break the defense enough to get yourself an ideal shot from anywhere on the court really. Open mid-range, open dunk, open free, open drive. I don't care. But you keep the momentum going and even if they miss sometimes, that's a good play right there. If Channing's going to miss that, he's going to miss that. But you let that go because that's good execution. Same thing again, get it to call the paper Rubio, get it to Mitchell. Mitchell gets it to Rubio. I'm gonna pump fake, create more energy, hand off more energy. They pin me there, but that's decent take. That's a mismatch bigger size. So maybe I should have backed down there, but the energy is still good. And like I said, sometimes, even if you do everything right, you'll get a clean look. But sometimes, because this set is so good, even if you do something wrong, see, that's a late handoff. That's bad, but because of the energy and the flow and the spacing, I still got it down. And most importantly of all, it's not a one option player, it's a free option play. So I mean, if you have enough time, why not run both options in one possession? So here you can see I'm doing the flush. I flushed in the wrong guy, so I don't care. I call the set again, reverse the ball, get it back to Mitchell, get it back to Rubio. If this time didn't work, so I will go with the handoff and the handoff goes to the flush and I got a wide open look for Mitchell because of all that movement and energy. That's a miss, but that's good, good action. All right? So as always, family, appreciate you guys. Hope you enjoyed the set. Let me know how it goes. And uh, enjoy your holidays. Well, they're over now, but hope you had a great holiday. I did. And for those who you gave me a sponsorship, thank you very much. And as always, I will see all of you next time.